Greetings and welcome to the Mount Rushmore podcast. My name is Jeff and guess who's here? It's Richard. Hello. And Michael. Howdy. These guys, they've got a habit of clashing over um, their opinions about things and it could be just about anything. And this week that thing is celebrities who at celebrities who outlast their welcome. <laughs> Jeff, why did you pick this? Oh, thank you for asking. Uh, I love it when he, I love when he interviews himself. We don't have to do anything. <laughs> Maybe he'll make all the picks too, and we can just sit here and drink wine. <laughs> nice. I've outlasted my own welcome. I'm I'm fascinated with the the nature of celebrity and how it's a symbiotic relationship between a individual or a group and the audience that uh, favors them or listens to them and supports them and financially and, and with their attention, and sometimes that. Uh, that relationship doesn't end at the appropriate time uh, from the point of view of the audience. And some of the best people can uh, be, uh, from an entertainment standpoint, can be supported by an audience and embraced. And then a month later, a year later, just be totally out of fashion. And, hmm. and, uh, and then, you know, is there, is there a way to, to know when it's time to go, hmm. <laughs> to, to leave the party? Did they miss, something did they miss a sign um ask so. uh, kenny um kenny rogers yeah <laughs> no one to hold him no one to hold yeah him. no one to yeah. hold him no one to walk away jeff have you ever i mean you've been around la for what 20 plus years now yeah. uh, have you ever encountered a celebrity that uh you know in the flesh that you were just like totally wowed by or had like the opposite effect where like you were somebody like you met somebody and then you're just like oh they no turned way. you off yeah oh wow you know, I, I guess I did see William Shatner at a G4 taping, and I remember thinking, depending on whatever era, had I met him in 92 or 93, I might think, oh, this poor guy. He doesn't mm. know that his his career has been over three times already, and he hasn't been informed of it. He's he's doing ads for, like, I think... A like, Sprint or something. Y- like yeah, that, or right? like before it? Priceline, yeah, I was like... I mean, it might have been like how to learn a language rapidly cassette or something. Sure. But he currently has like a new one, uh, a new like uh, promotional thing. Huh, yeah. Just kind of like old guy. Oh, yeah. AARP sort of promotion. One of those Medicare replacement sort of deals. I think mm-hmm. so. Oh, yeah. Boy. Yeah. But he came back. He just went to space. <laughs> he just went to space. Hmm. So there's somebody who I think one reason celebrities don't know when it's time to leave the party is because. That's we, not a, we won't let them go. We won't let them go. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, they, and they, they are surrounded with people whose job it is to tell them to hang on because they want to wring another dollar out of their career or they're just on the payroll and their job is just to say nice things to to Mr. Shatner. But also, you, it's like it's not just it's like Michael Jordan. Like you you might have another season in you and you don't even know it. Yeah, so. we um, this is I don't know how related this is. Um, the other night we watched Mask of Zorro, the uh, Antonio Banderas, yeah, sure, uh, and Anthony Hopkins, Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. great movie. I'd never seen it before. Yeah, great fucking movie. It was really fun. I mean, you know, a couple, never seen couple, it either. No, couple of drinks in, and just like it's fun. The uh, the action is great. Uh-huh. He's like charming. Uh, uh, Catherine Zeta Jones is beautiful and yeah. charming, and uh, Anthony Hopkins is great and revengeful, and mm-hmm. you know they're just uh, really good. And then he. Antonio Banderas seemed to be like one of those actors who we were like looking at each other like, why hasn't he had like that weird I'm 65 now kind of comeback yeah. role? Like is, is he like on the cusp of like Quentin Tarantino, like rediscovering him, you know, from having had him in some sort of uh, he was in a what was the movies that he was in from Dust Till Dawn? Yeah. And he might have had it like another like it's interesting when there's like characters who or actors or actresses who people like you said won't let go of like they're constantly around and you're like oh my god this yeah versus people that kind of go away and then you know some somehow mm-hmm. reels them back in yeah how, how many second chapters have some performers have somebody was talking about the movie let them people will talk or something with meryl streep and candace bergen is in that and there are scenes where she's just holding her own with meryl streep like Candace Bergen kind of became a TV actor. She was like a s- strong 70s film actor, but she really became a s- TV actor with Murphy's. Wait. Now, was she the one Murphy, that was Murphy the puppet? Brown. Or was she the. <laughs> which one would. Uh, oh, no, wait, that was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Charlie McCarthy was the okay. puppet. 
or Snurd. What was the other one? Uh, there's another one. Mortimer Snurd. Mortimer Snurd. Mortimer Snurd. Yeah. Mortimer Snurd yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, people who have had multiple chapters. Who, and what's is that? Antonio Banderas. Kind of. I think he got, got some acclaim for that Picasso miniseries. And I remember seeing him in the Expendables three or something mm. like that. Just chewing up the scenery. Just uh, he was like just making everybody look foolish with mm. his great acting. Stuff. Yeah, Rich, go check out Mask of Zora. Like, All right. Great. Yeah. Two hours, you're in and out, and you're like, oh, I just had so much fun. Mask yeah. of Zora, did you see it with your billionaire f- uh, father and mother, and did you walk down Crime Alley afterwards? Because that's how Batman gets made. Mm. Do you go see a Zora movie? Well, let's see. The pearls fell. The pearls fell. Mm. And the shot went out, and I screamed, Dad. Mm. And then he looked at me, and he said, uh, uh, dress up like a bat yeah. and avenge me. <laughs> All the time. Yeah. And Just then you said, with great power comes great responsibility. Mm-hmm. And then I, the spider bit me. And then, okay. Found, uh, found the Green Lantern ring. Yeah. The spe- spider That's bit it. him, and it really hurt. And that was about it. It <laughs> just about really it. hurt. And then uh, superpowers? Nope. No. No. Nope. Really <laughs> Ouch. Yes, if swelling is a superpower. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you got, Richard? All right. My first choice is someone who I think has gone away for good. Ooh. We can only hope. Oh. Dennis Rodman. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, good choice. Yeah. I remember him. Yeah, remember, for sure. Remember how he was like a big big shot basketball player? Even yeah. though he only scored like two points a game. Yeah. But he got like a billion rebounds a game and that. And, hustle. Yeah, and he hustle. had a lot of hustle. Mm-hmm. And was like, had weird multicolored hair and wore a nose ring. Yeah. And had a bunch of tattoos. Dated was, Madonna for a little bit. Dated Madonna was in the Madonna sex book, I believe, mm-hmm. at one point. And after <laughs> his playing career was over, he just hung around. Yeah, you know he he tried to become an actor. He did like a Jean Claude Van Damme movie. Um, he was on two separate seasons of Celebrity Apprentice. Mm. Was on the Celebrity Mole. Was on the uh, Big Brother uh, UK Celebrity series. Yeah. Um, and then of course made his uh, foray into international diplomacy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By attempting to go to a North Korea and uh-huh. broker peace on our in our time, <laughs> yeah, weird. And if there's anyone who has been more addicted to being famous than Dennis Rodman, yeah, I don't know who it is. Yeah, I mean he's someone who just craves the spotlight, mm-hmm. and I think at some point people just, even though every celebrity craves the spotlight, there. I mean I know there are celebrities who say I don't want to be, f- I hate being famous. I wish I could just. And I have the Daniel Day Lewis sort of yeah. like just do my craft and that. Yeah, no, they yeah. all want to be famous to some level. Yeah, but some people are just more craven about it than others, mm-hmm. and that's definitely where Rodman fits in. And you could just you know, marrying himself in a wedding dress, <laughs> marrying <laughs> Carmen Electra. Yeah. There's just so many t- warning signs of this guy is a narcissist to the yeah. uh, nth degree. And at some point, people. The public sees through that and just gets sick of shit about of that. Mm-hmm. And I think Rodman, we reached our, our saturation limit of him in probably, what, 98, 99? And 25, 30 years later, he's still, yeah. 25 years later, he still pops up occasionally. Like It's like a bad wildfire that you think you've put it out, and then a little flare-up starts, and you have mm-hmm. to try and tamp it down there. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, another one flares up (laughs) over here, and you're just constantly putting out these little hot spots. Yeah. That's what I feel like with Dennis Rodman's popularity in his career. It's just constantly us trying to put it out. Well, what is he supposed to do? Open like a soap factory in Vermont and just quietly sell soaps? Yes. From, okay. I would like that. Okay. I would buy. Look, look, if Dennis Rod, if, if this meant I didn't have pottery to see, stand or something, if this meant I didn't have to see Dennis Rodman anymore, yeah, I would absolutely buy soap from him. Okay. Uh, for some friends um, posted a video of this guy who sat down with them at the Abbey with his wife, girlfriend, and started up a conversation and found out that it was one of their birthdays and so bought them shots and they did shots and, uh, it was incidentally Dennis Rodman. It was, oh, of course. It, it was not very dramatic. He was not uh, saying, I think he said, I'm Dennis. And, you know, so he would, he addressed them, I think, in a very kind of humble way. I, I think right. he maybe could sense they weren't basketball fans. And, yeah. But it's weird that there was a point in time where even you, as a non basketball oh, yeah. sports guy, yeah. knew who Dennis Rodman yeah. was. I think I also know that Dennis Rodman might 
perceive his uh, early um, identity, public identity, identity to be a guy on a team with Michael Jordan, who was, would it, it was almost like being the Flash on a team with on the Justice League, and Superman, right, is always going to be just this huge presence there, mm-hmm. and that Michael Jordan is still a celebrity, sure, but uh, he's doing it in a different way, than, yeah, than Rodman. But Rodman, I felt like, had to strike out on his own path. He had to be the worm, or he had to be this this freak, right? Sideshow, sideshow, exactly. Yeah, that's a good way. That's a good phrase for it. Compared to, you know, the 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 ringmaster that that Jordan was. So in a way, he carved out his own path and is still doing it. But it's just kind of in a way that seems a little bit uh, um, kind of nagging and and. Well, it's like he unlocked the key to celebrity uh-huh. because there have been a lot of basketball players who hustled. And got a lot of rebounds and steals yeah. Yeah. and did stuff like that. And unless you're a hardcore basketball fan, you don't know who these people are. But through the sheer force of his personality and his willingness to do whatever it took to get noticed, he got noticed. Yeah. When did he um when did he start doing wrestling nonsense? Oh, that, that was back in that, the I wanna say that was back in the Was that still while he was playing basketball or was that like post basketball I'm gonna no, he was, was he was still playing basketball. It was like 97, 98, okay. something like that. Yeah. That's just, I mean, right there, if you're like one of your like key interests is to go no. be a part of the WWE or WWF or whatever, he, like you're looking for something extra. You're yeah. Looking, you're looking to be more than, <laughs> you're looking just to push, like God bless, like, uh, you know, even someone like Cindy Lauper, like. She was out there. Be, that was being more than just being a singer. Yeah. It was more, it, you know. Uh, she was part of the storyline. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Judy Dench loved uh, well when she when she put Jake the Snake Roberts yeah. <laughs> in, in, in the figure four, yeah, the figure, figure four, four leg lock, <laughs> right? She, she got, him, <laughs> got him to tap Didi, out. Dd Dench, <laughs> <laughs> the Dench DT. I don't know. Um, Good pick, the, Rachel. The underdenture. The, uh, okay, <laughs> okay, Winfield, what's your first choice? Uh, mine is an incredibly like rote choice, but the Kardashians writ large. Oh wow! Like okay. I, I, I'm. There's never been like a. I am always so confused by why the public is so interested in this family. I think it's like that strange, and why they continue to be like millionaires and billionaires, and what product are they putting out that is so interesting yeah and like what what is what is the general contribution like i understand that like kylie it like is like running some sort of cosmetics company and her face and the image is like okay she so she's uh you know kind of springboarded this onto i guess maybe there's a passion there that i just don't understand this person oh okay but like it's it feels everything kind of feels like this strange like um you know what's that uh what's that that lawyer like kind of that um lawyerly uh saying like a fruit from the poison tree like when oh. like it's like it's like that thing that comes out of like a you always hear it on like law and order all oh. the time is like they introduce evidence but the evidence was acquired kind of like oh, eh, kind of shady, manner. shady okay. so like the judge would just like throw it out and be like this is you can't you can't include this because they got it because of a warrant that wasn't oh, okay. like everything seems to have kind of stemmed out of like, you know, Robert Kardashian, uh, yeah. their late father, who was like friends with and lawyer of OJ Simpson, which was like the number one, like public trial crime of the century sort of thing that he got off on. So if yeah. he's going to get off, then everything else that comes out of that is like, Oh, well this, they're just going to be famous because of something that gets trickled down. And I, I think that there's some something that almost ties into what Richard was talking about with like Dennis Rodman, like the early 2000s, late 90s, famous for being famous sort of thing that, you know, with like Paris Hilton and just like these yeah. people that were famous because they were related to someone else. And maybe that's always been how mm-hmm. people are famous, you know, if you think of, you know, titles and money that's passed down. But th- this family is a family that has been rich and always been rich, it seems, and has just parlayed that richness into a celebrity for being rich and around other rich people. Yeah. And then I'm just like, 
I don't know. And then Caitlyn Jenner just, she just needs to go away. Like uh-huh. there's just like this aspect of like, as being like this, st- you know, trying to go against anti-wokeness and the Republican. Pop- yeah. It's just like every aspect. I just, mm-hmm. I just want that aspect of celebrity to just like dissolve. Somehow yeah. And go away. And I, I yeah. don't know why I'm so bothered by it, but I am. I, I think you, I do not. It's almost like they're broadcasting on a wavelength. Whatever the value that they bring, the actual products that they actually sell, like whatever business that the model that actually is, other than being famous, I. It's like it's broadcasting on a wavelength that I can't even hear, hear or see it because I don't know what. There's some people might say, "Well, yeah, I've been using her moisturizer for ten years." Like, <laughs> what? I didn't know there was an actual product there. Yeah. But I think I think there's something legit that they actually sell or have companies that actually sell. Sure. And but I, I have no idea what it is. And then, you know, the, uh, I think there's a feeling of like, you know, Kim getting married to being married to Kanye West, who is another kind of like, oh, yeah, crazy person. I'm out there in the world and I'm famous for being a talented rapper. But yeah. then he himself sees himself as something much higher than. Yeah that and speaks to people in a way and is just Mm -hmm. it's all and it's just like it's just too much i just it's so much it's so much extra involved in this one family that i'm sure there are good people within it but what is put out there to me and Mm -hmm. i just i i just wanted to go away in that way this was during uh the i forget what the show was that that paris hilton had with nicole richie is that what her name Mm -hmm. um they had a show and they were kind of famous for being famous kind of people. And then I saw a headline from a newspaper from the 50s or something. And it said, Nikki Hilton caught with actress or something. Nikki Hilton was like Paris's grandfather or something. Mm. An heir of the Hilton fortune whose job was to be a playboy rich guy who goes around and... Married was, to Elizabeth Taylor. At was one he? Point. Oh, I'm thinking of a different Hilton. There was a Hilton who was... Uh-huh. I'm going to look this up. Okay. Yeah. So uh, whatever that job is, a famous for being famous, it's or, or essentially being American royalty, um, it's been around for a while. And yeah, it's it's the point where it's an actual career path <laughs> because, uh, you know, it it's more legit than selling Bitcoin or something like that, because whatever it is, people have been doing it for a while. Yeah, I think that, you know, I think recently in the last, what, five or six years that you know, in, the influencer kind of tag has, you know, that yeah. it's, it's just like in, you just wear stuff and people buy it because you wear it. Isn't that just what like, yeah, you know, I think his name was brought up earlier, maybe even before the who was the guy that was like selling peas? Orson Welles. Yeah. Like, is he is Orson was Orson Welles an influencer, an influencer? because you yeah. because you were trying? No, he was just a guy that sold helped yeah. to sell peas because yeah. he was famous. <laughs> it's not the same thing. That's crazy. All right. so I, Nikki, w- I wouldn't want Orson Welles to yeah. go away. No, Nikki Hilton. Nikki Hilton. Although it's known as Conrad Hilton Jr. Okay. Was yes, was married to uh, Elizabeth really? Taylor back wow. in the. He died like in the sixties, so maybe it's a different one than you're thinking of. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it was the forties or something that I saw that. Maybe. But it just st- uh, struck me that oh, uh, Paris is really just joining the family business. <laughs> it's just, it's just being a person. Yeah, I think being that, famous. Yeah. yeah, I think that there's like the you know kind of. MTV reality TV rise of, uh, well, you know, it started with the real world kind of trying to trying to show something that the world that it actually is, and then they just kind of fan, you know, kind of finagled it into, oh, let's put Paris Hilton on a farm and have her yeah. walk around stilettos and dig, you know, wrestle with pigs or not even do that, and that's right. like real life. It's mm-hmm. like, what are you? T-? And then people believed it. I think yeah. I think that's what the crazy thing is. Man, Freddy. All right, my second choice is Ellen DeGeneres. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> what was that? What was that sound for? He just—he was choices. dancing. He was up on the out of his chair. He's he was just, dancing. Just I, like it's one of those things when, like, you're like, "Boy, I really haven't put a, a terrible amount of thought into this topic," and then you hear a, a, you hear a choice, and you're like, "Yeah, I do want that person mm-hmm. to go away." Yeah, is, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and I think the problem with Ellen DeGeneres is she may not be any worse than any other celebrity in terms of her personality and how she treats other people and her, you know, how she is as a boss, that sort of thing. Probably somewhere in the middle. 
yeah. if I was going to guess. And my friends who have done like personal assistant work for like really random people, from what I can tell, even the lowest celebrity still thinks they're the hot shit mm. and mm-hmm. can treat people like crap. Mm. So let's just establish that. Yeah. But the problem is when you build your whole career on be- on being the nice one, the nicest person in Hollywood, and uh, everything is about being nice to other people. Yeah. And it turns out you don't live by that same ethos mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. every day. You're setting yourself up for a fall. Yeah. And I think that... Talking to you, Tom Hanks. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. T. Hanks. Hanks. Um, you know, I, I think that she, she was overexposed to begin with, just being on TV every day and kind of doing the same thing on her talk show every day. It's not like I could... I, I never really watched it, but... I think I could watch it, turn in, tuned in at any point, and she was probably doing one of three mm-hmm. bits that she did. Mm. Everyone was dancing, mm. or they were playing a game, or they brought somebody out who did an internet video to have them do whatever they did on the internet video in yeah. the studio. She, he's he's going to go after Chewbacca Mom right now, yeah. and I am not going to have And so I think there was an element of that to begin with, but I think that everyone was like, yeah, but she's so nice. You can't get. How can you get mad at Ellen? Then it turns out maybe she's not so nice. And then it was just, that was just the little spark that we needed. Yeah. To just set off a little powder keg. Do you think there was, uh, this is this is a minefield, but I, I would say that many Americans know that they should be accepting of persons who are non-straight, not non-hetero non-cis. persons. Non-cis. And, but yet... It is something that they believe when they do that, they deserve a pat on the back for. Uh, so the fact that Ellen was some someone who uh, was proudly or un, un, unashamedly out right, uh, was something that maybe middle America thought, okay, well, you get one, but you better be perfect all the time. Uh, right. And, and then so if, if it turns out she's not perfect all the time, like... Johnny Carson wasn't perfect all the time. Sure. Or Merv Griffin wasn't perfect. Then there is a sense of uh, of a little bit of anger or like, um, I don't know. I've, I've, Think about Carson. Someone like Carson is he didn't build his career on being perfect. Yeah. On being nice guy. I mean, his a lot of his, how many of his monologues involved jokes about his, one of his ex-wives. Yeah. You know, so there is always yeah. a little bit of that yeah. sort of in his... Yeah. In what he did for a career. Uh-huh. I don't disagree with you that I, that there may be something of that in, you know, a certain section of the country sort mm-hmm. of celebrating her fall. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I think it is probably, I think personally it is more that sort of putting yourself up on a pedestal and we just love knocking people down from it. Yeah. Okay. I I do think celebrity is an exciting enticing um status that many people wish they have and so we have our arms crossed when we evaluate celebrities and wonder why why do i have to pay attention to you and give you my adoration and so right there's a little bit of the gloating that comes with that person when that person screws up (laughs) and it's weird about someone like ellen who paid her dues yeah. You know, was a stand up comedian for yeah. fifteen, twenty years kind of successful, but not mm-hmm. Seinfeld level successful yeah. or somebody like that. You know, I have a book of uh stories from different comedians talking about his life on the road. And there are a lot of stories about her like you know, staying in a flop house of, you know, like stand up comedians. You go on the, yeah. you go to play, you might know about this, Jeff. You go the to condo, play, like, comedy condo. The comedy condo, yeah. yeah. You go play the ha ha hole in Houston, and the guy who owns it also has a condo, so you and five other yeah. comedians can all stay there. And, and she would do that and, yeah. you know, be sleeping on cots and stuff like that. So it should be a feel good story. And for a long time it was. But I think we just love knocking people down. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, that is interesting. I think I feel like celebrity. So, uh, celebrity is a contract that we we give to to persons, 
and uh, sure. and I think since we're so envious <laughs> of them <laughs> that when we when they fuck up, it's we, like man, uh, we gave this to you and you blew it. Yeah, I'm not even mad. Yeah, <laughs> just disappointed. Just disappointed. <laughs> Winfield, what's your second? He's calling you right now to tell you, <laughs> do not talk about this person. Yeah. Uh, Tom Cruise. Oh. Yeah. I So it's a mixed bag for me because I like Tom Cruise movies. I think he does really um, still, you know, at age 60 or whatever almost 60 yeah. or 60 plus. He's right in that kind of I'm not quite sure how old he is sort of age. But man, his like kind of celebrity personality is something that I'd like to see go away. Uh-huh. Like the, I think, um, there is a falseness to his, um, kind of in-person celebrityness that uh, you know there's a veneer there that is just kind of obnoxious. He seems like he's mm-hmm. trying too hard to be your best friend. Yeah, at, you know whatever. He's so glad. He's I've never seen a person that seems <laughs> so glad to meet everybody mm-hmm. in interviews and everything. Um, I think that, um, back in the Late nineties, early two thousands, we're kind of hovering around this era of like the Oprah Winfrey jumping on the couch thing, yeah. and whatever, kind of downplaying the Scientology aspect of his life. And I think that mm-hmm. there's just, I would like him as a movie actor to just be making movies. Yeah, I just want to see him. I don't want to know like the um the personal details of this person because they seem like. It's just it just strips away from them as yeah. this guy that's jumping off of a plane mm-hmm. to do a stunt because he's. But even that, he's trying so hard to do something. He's trying hard to do. He's to trying impress so you. hard mm-hmm. to impress you, even though you don't really. Sorry, you don't really need that to happen. I don't like, need, Yeah, I don't need to hear any more stories about how he rode a motorcycle out of a plane into another plane. Yeah, and it was an insane thing, and nobody <laughs> wanted him to do it. But he said, "Oh, I'll do it anyway because I'm do you just think, glad to do it." Do you think this is a victory though? Because I think for a while there. Tom Cruise trying to get everybody to think he was crazy or um, maybe um, do you remember there was I think there was a time in which he was trying just hard to make people think he believe he was not a homosexual. Mm. True. So I think crazy uh, trumps, is some, trumps, trumps that because mm. homosexual destroys box office in Asia and internationally. Uh, crazy. Uh, we got, got crazy all over the place. <laughs> yeah, we got crazy. All Every over country's the got crazy. Yeah. Um, That's interesting. I, yeah. you know, I, it's just I think that there is just like the, you know, kind of very apparent personality kind of. Yeah. I don't want to say defect, but there's something there that's on the face of things, and I think that's possibly what just happens with being a celebrity. You you have to put yourself out there. I'm sure that there is like a switch that is flipped with him when he has to do press junkets and he mm-hmm. has to go you know have to go on a tonight show or whatever where there's just like he's gonna tell the story that has been engineered to be funny enough and endearing enough yeah. and whatever enough and maybe th- this is what it's like with so many people that are stars that mm-hmm. become celebrities that become you know yeah. very few people are like the mega celebrities that he is like yeah. that sure i would has say this like pull that has that can make things happen that produces his own stuff that is just like you know but then again man i it's interesting to me about tom cruise is that for a long time he wanted to convince you that he was a great actor Hmm. like he got he got away from some of the you know the early stuff he wanted to do like important movies with great directors and work with great actors and then he started making mission impossible movies and then he started making other action movies and he just, that part of him just went away. And now he's trying to prove something else. It's like he's always trying to prove something. Yeah. And earlier in his career, it was, hey, I'm as good of an actor as Dustin Hoffman. I'm as good, as, I can carry, a, you know, this, you know, Oliver Stone movie, or I can do all this different stuff. I Color looked up money. This, and, yeah. Yeah. I looked up this IMDb. You know, he hasn't done anything that I would say is a non-action flick since Valkyrie. That was 2008. Mm-hmm. So at some point around 2008, he just sort of gave up on the... He, what it, what he wanted to prove was no longer that I'm a serious actor. It was that I am the biggest movie star in the world. Hmm. That's what I want to prove. 
So he's always, like you said, to your point, he's always just trying to prove something to the public and the public doesn't care. I wonder why it works with Dwayne Johnson and Will Smith and w- these other action stars, why it seems like they have an authentic offstage identity. And I don't know if it's because of Cruz's um, participation with um, um, Scientology. and uh, I don't think that helps. Yeah. Let's I don't think it, it helps that, that we all think that he's strongly, his identity, there's a big part of his identity that is under uh, close scrutiny and control. I think, I think with like, with, with Dwayne Johnson, I think that they, I think that there is a, a genuine, okay, that's not saying that Tom Cruise doesn't have like a hard work ethic. I think with him, you see a physical work ethic in the stuff that he posts in terms of, I'm going to keep myself in this overly peak physical condition. Then you see that he like still produces and works with like his ex-wife as like the main producer on like everything that he does. If you look, I can't remember her name, but if you see all the different things that he's involved oh. in, like he's still working with this person that he's no longer married to, but is like they're still there's like an there's something there that's like okay, well this is a person that isn't just going to discard an ex because he's become oh. more than uh-huh. there's, I think there's an element of uh, Danny. I think Danny Johnson might be her name or, or uh-huh. something. Um, there, I think there's an element with him at least that like he might put out like just ridiculous garbage movies all the time, but he's not expected to also act against Dustin Hoffman and try to win. He's going to do the jungle book and he's going to do rampage and he's going to do these things and all these fast and furious movies. But like, He's, he's the rock. I mean, what do, you yeah. want, what do you want him to do? I And I think there's a part of it that is where he came from influences that as well. And I'd put Will Smith into that. Mm-hmm. That when we first encountered them as celebrities, they were in very different circumstances than they are today. Mm. I mean, the rock was a wrestler. And so for a lot of people, they still associate the rock with wrestling. Yeah, for and sure. It, absolutely. And Will Smith was, a, was, you know, a rap kind of this sort of like goofy rapper yeah. kind of guy and just made you made you laugh with his songs Mm -hmm. almost a a rap weird owl in some way not doing parody stuff but like in terms of the seriousness of the songs so i think that they built a lot of they built a lot of goodwill up earlier in their careers that they have been able to use moving forward Hmm. oh yeah as uh, we see them as entertainers who entered the realm of legitimate acting yeah yeah we are legitimately acting here, <laughs> acting like we have topics left. We don't. We ran out of them. They, it is run, run, the, run and dry. Yeah, have you ever seen like you've seen that movie? Where, like the movies where just like there's that single ball bouncing down like the hourglass. Yeah. And you're just you're trying to. It is. There's one in there. And, yeah. Uh, in the hot, man, yeah. And then what happens when? Him. What happens when it runs out? <laughs> I don't know, but you can help us out by sending us uh, suggestions as to future topics. You can do that on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you uh, click after you see Mount Rushmore podcast in the Google machine. The garbage bag. <laughs> <laughs> wherever you find us. <laughs> just slid right into the recycle yeah. bin on your desktop. Yeah. Uh, we Boy, that love feels like a dated reference, doesn't it? The yeah, desktop, the recycle bin. <laughs> we would love to have uh, your suggestions. And any kind of comments you want to leave on previous episodes, that'd be super cool. We'd appreciate it. And we've just restocked the Mount Rushmore merch store. With we got new coffee mugs. Mm-hmm. we got new t-shirts. Tanks. 100% Arabica beans as well. Yeah. You can get our coffee. Our Nike, so delicious. Nike, Nike co-branded sneakers. Yes. Ground and whole bean. Oh. So you can get them both. Oh, so the... So for all of you, you know, world. coffee heads that don't want to dive... Yeah. Ground stuff, or you know, pre-ground stuff. I understand, but for all those people that are on the go, yeah. that need your Mount Rushmore coffee, hundred percent around the pods. We got the K cups. Don't do Colombian though. No, because absolutely it's racist. Trade, yeah. yeah, yeah, you know. So, yeah, single origin Sumatra is available. Mm-hmm. We're getting that one in soon. Yeah. Also, we're gonna do teas. Teas very soon. Wait, t-shirts or teas? Like no, like T A. Okay. P tips. Okay. Doing those. I don't know. I heard that term the other day. <laughs> Pea tips? I think that's... Uh, Whistle tips? Bump rub. Uh, somebody said Coffee Bean is owned by a company that 
we're doing branded stuff where you know that game that you play at the beach where like one is like a like a thing that you wear in your hand and it's kind yeah. of velcro yeah that and another one on the other person and you throw a ball back and forth it's Richard my faces on each of the paddles and then Jeff is, is branded the on the ball back and forth on the beach so you can take us to the beach and when you throw the ball it also Jeff makes his head yeah <laughs> When, it's the same sound that he makes when he's trying to make us think that he's paying attention to us. Yeah. yeah. He's a million miles away. <laughs> really? That's fascinating. That's interesting. Stuff like that. Yeah. I just got a job on Fiverr. <laughs> you know, those, uh, those uh, they used to have te- telephones. Thing of the past? No, coming back. Coming but back. it's like in the shape of one of us holding up a receiver. <laughs> this is like, like an SI Mickey Mouse phone. magazine, but yeah. it's the fo- instead, of the <laughs> instead, of the, instead of the football <laughs> phone, it's the podcast. It's phone. awful. <laughs> awful. We've invested in awful things. <laughs> Please buy our don't stuff. Don't work anymore. <laughs> We're broke. <laughs> the tote bag, the three podcasters CD. Uh, okay. Uh, the comedy portion is concluded. Now we're going to get back to boring you with the podcast portion. And let's go back to Richard Manfredi with Boy, is there a choice. podcast that hates itself more than us? <laughs> we, are, we are number one in self-loathing. self-loathing. <laughs> well, they loathe us, too. To be proud of. They, others loathe us. They loathe us also. That's true. <laughs> we might be number one in audience loathing, too. <laughs> My next choice is Johnny Depp. Oh, oh, wow. That guy can fuck off. Hot Solid, take. Dude. You know what I mean? Oh, man. Do I even need to? I, I, sometimes, I make a, sometimes you make a pick, and you're just like, Great, I can talk about this, and we're going to have a nice conversation and really kind of discuss yeah. whether this person belongs on here. And then sometimes there are those picks that are just so obvious. So, like, okay. once you say it, it's like Johnny Depp. It's like, oh, what more do you need to say about Johnny Depp? Fuck boy, that guy. Boy, okay. this is answer. This is answering, like, a written question on a test. Uh, it says, please show your work, and yeah. it just says, no. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> no just fuck that no. guy. Fuck this problem. No. Well, Johnny Depp is interesting because he's, he's like the opposite of Tom Cruise. I don't need to see anything else that he's No, and that's, that, that, is kind of, that was one of my points. He's, not only is he allegedly a, uh, a wife beater. Hmm. Wait, I thought that was all like totally erased, the Amber Heard thing. Uh, I don't know. I, I, think it was... it's, I think there's a, it's, a lot of it is up in the air. Oh wow! I thought he was. I think he un-canceled. lost his libel case, didn't he? I thought he won his libel. Let's see. Do I care? No. Oh, okay. Actually, am okay. I going to look it up? No, because I don't care. But he's been playing the same fucking character. Like but a, that's like and, a, that, and that's the bigger issue. You've already when 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 you've already got one big strike against you. Knock it off with the Hunter S. Thompson meets Captain Jack Sparrow meets Keith Richards meets whatever. Yeah guy you're trying to be at this point in your career you're like 55 and you're greasy and it's weird Mm -hmm. stop okay yeah there is a gentleman oh my goodness there is a gentleman that lives uh kind of in like this kind of winnebago it's kind of like oh um it is like the electric mayhem's tour bus (laughs) winnebago (laughs) thing yes and uh there's a guy that frequents our liquor store um and he kind of looks like this Kind of a Muppetish type guy mm-hmm. with a black top hat, but you know, kind of like that um, wow. slash, yeah, slash. I've never gotten out of my supposed heyday in yeah. like 1983, and I'm just, oh, wow. I'm just gonna live through this in the ex- this exact same moment that I think that I've peaked, and I'm never gonna change. There's, there's an element of there's that an too. element there's like that aura of just like oh man, yeah, he mm. just th- does not want to like there's scarves and just gonna be everywhere for his life, <laughs> and rings on every of scarves. finger, and, and all in silver strange i think yeah. times when i've seen him play himself he was on extras i think it was or something or life's too short or he was on a ricky gervais show and he speaks with a kind of british accent right that's the thing that i stop and go okay that's not he's got that madonna thing going on yeah well he's yeah. he's from another country he lost his libel suit by the way did he okay it was ruled that amber heard's uh majority of her allegations had been proven to a civil standard in england okay which is actually harder than in the U.S., is so it? that should tell you Okay, something. well, I, I apologize um, for any persons who... <laughs> yeah, okay, good to know, good to know. Just setting the record, because yeah. if, if nothing else, you get hard facts. That's right. Here on the Mount Rushmore podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you're right, Michael. It's just... It's to the point with him where if there's a movie that I'm sort of interested in, and I see that, oh, Johnny Depp's been cast in a role, it's like, oh, mm-hmm. really? Fuck. Mm-hmm. Now I can't see it. Yeah, he's like he's like will he's like willfully out there ruining movies for that I might be interested in, just with his sheer presence. Uh-huh. Do you think on the other side of depth, like I feel like 
Cage has the same type of uh, energy, but he's just so weird. He doesn't even know what's going on. I feel like he's mm. more, but he seems more harmless. Okay, he seems harmless, and he seems to be some level in on the joke. Oh, okay. maybe not fully in on the joke, but I know he was like on Saturday Night Live and he did like a weekend update thing with someone else doing an impression oh, yeah. of him. Yeah. That sort of thing. I think he gets that he's weird and he just leans into it. Walk, and I like think, walking kind of. I, yeah. I think too with Cage, like the things that that he seems to impact, the, like the lives that he impacts negatively is his own. It's like I seem to recall like he just d- decided to invest a lot of money in comic books. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then like. Oh yeah, and then like that was like a bad idea for oh. it. like the, like he, uh, an ungodly amount of money in like yeah. action comics number one uh-huh. and like it just like just making bad financial choices to satisfy your own personal whim, but it doesn't hurt anybody other than yeah. like your bank account. Yeah. So like who, John? You know, it'd be like you'd be like you know Nicholas Cage loses all this money and because he bought so many comics is like, mm-hmm. and he's gonna make yeah. a, a, that pig movie or whatever it is like whatever uh-huh. he's gonna do it's gonna be he's just gonna. Huh, he'll make some more weird movies, Did, and it's going to be fine. A friend of Disney who worked for studios said he asked Dick Cook or whatever, the head of Disney, to send his payment for National Treasure 3 in the form of a bid on a Civil War sword, a $4 million in a Civil War sword. So that was that was where he wanted the money to go, part of his payment, Yeah, his money to go to that. So, yeah, he's just a man of of odd desires. That, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and the last good movie I think he did was like 2015. You know what I mean? Like he's somebody who just keeps showing up in really not great movies. Yeah. To the point where it's kind of reliable at this point. If Johnny Depp is in it, it's like, ooh, no thanks. <laughs> a hard pass. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. I also find that Depp has played a lot of. Well, remember there's, a, I think, when I first came out to Hollywood, you could walk down Hollywood Boulevard and see about five different Johnny Depp characters hmm. see There's edward scissorhands Ed, Cap, Cap Cap and jack. jack then Willy wonka uh-huh and it seemed like there was one or two others edward uh, yeah that was actually edward. edward um yeah it seemed like there was another one um but yeah there was always a dep happening hmm. down there i don't know if there is any more or not right i don't know i think there are some persistent um imagery that will just never go away and i think jack sparrow is one of those I think Johnny Depp reminds a lot of people of the mistakes they made in the 90s and early 2000s. <laughs> you look at him and you go, yeah, I spent time at too many clubs in Hollywood, yeah. in Los Angeles, when I was just out of college or uh-huh. whatever. Yeah, I thought long, stringy, greasy hair was cool and wearing a goatee. Yeah. <laughs> I did I did a lot of those things, and I don't want to be yeah. reminded of that. And I certainly don't want to see someone in 2021 attempting to pull off the same thing. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, like almost like seeing Macaulay Culkin now with his head kind of like he's got a little conservative kind of haircut. Like Culkin looks kind of like kind of like he got a little makeover. You know? Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of a ghost of Christmas past thing happening uh, when seeing Johnny Depp. Yeah, uh, Winfield, your third is what? This is my only one on here that's uh, really kind of feels personal. Uh, Morrissey. Oh, Morrissey right. is just right at the top of my list. Let's just get like, into this. We're just okay. like I don't. I, I think the continuing presence of Morrissey as a celebrity or f- almost celebrity or has been celebrity still or whatever just constantly dings against like my memory of him yeah. as being like my favorite musician. Yeah. And it's just it's, it feels just it just feels personal at this point, even though he does not know me. I would yeah. never I've never seen him in person other than a concert a few times. But like it's just one of those things where it's just like, God, you just have to be like racist mm-hmm. i mean i knew you were kind of like snotty and an asshole and we kind of talked about this a few weeks ago on that simpsons episode or that one that we mentioned like the the, the simpsons the take on snuffs him, yeah. to take on him and it feels just like one of these things that just like i can't help think about where this there's this, this guy that's out there every time i see like um a music video or hear like a smith song or hear even just morrissey stuff i'm just like ah uh, and then i hear his music and i'm like there is a expiration point on musicians being relevant. Yeah. And it feels rude to put it out there as to damper one's, uh, you know, artistic musical impact. But then it's just like, you could have stopped 15 mm. years ago and I would have been 
fine. I and, I, I, and I would have never have learned this stuff, or maybe I would have, mm. but it wouldn't have been like, oh, God, I'm going to try I'm I am probably going to try to listen to whatever the next album is and know that I'm going to be disappointed by it. So there's like a self-flagellation yeah. about it but i just want to like what if but it's always like that what if there's that spark this is like what if there he puts out this really great song but it's like mm. you know what but he's an asshole yeah and like not just an asshole but a racist asshole yeah and like yeah you know like you can you can live with asshole yes because once again a lot of celebrities are assholes but when you get to the xenophobic weirdness of morrissey that's when it gets to be like Ugh. you start hearing like you know uh I saw something even on Twitter today that was talking not about him, but like Eric Clapton and like, there was like a Washington post opinion piece about him, how he's so uh, isolated and how he's putting out these anti-vax songs and all this stuff. And it's like, someone was pointing, I was like, yeah, remember when he was like an, you know, a super great, like racist isolationist, like 30 years ago. I'm sorry. not talking about Morrissey talking about Eric Clapton here. Right. Uh, It feels like part and parcel of the same thing, but like, People point to like these evidence of these things that these people say, and you just kind of ignore him because, well, he's a great guitar player. Yeah, and you're just like, and it's you know, and it's just like, okay, what, what, mm-hmm. what is this constant trying to forgive? Yeah, because we yeah. want it to make it work. Maybe. Yeah, we want it. We're desperate to like. We love the the output this person makes, so we just want it to. We want it to yeah. be. A, acceptable to like them. what do we what do we do with our beautiful monsters in yeah this, this society but like that's that? the thing with like for, with like with, with the mazer yeah. i i don't need to hear him say anything else because it's just going to start keep it's going to continuously chip away at what i remember mm-hmm. you know and it's just and maybe that's just like my own personal thing that i have got to get through but then you know well, like if you that's, saw, that's if, why we have this podcast if you that. saw if you saw a headline that just said New interview with Morrissey where he says, and then it was just dot, 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 and it didn't, it got cut off right there. You wouldn't click on it. Yeah. Because you don't want to know what he says at this point. It can't be good. The only thing would would be nice would be like Morrissey apologizes, but he wouldn't ever because he's an asshole. Mm-hmm. Like that's. A- yeah. I feel like Paul McCartney has managed to become more woke or no, that's such a charged word. Enlight- enlightened. He, he's only going to be more vegan. And mm. as opposed to like young Paul McCartney, who was who was a child of the '40s, and and to he, he's somebody who's become more sophisticated over the years and more enlightened. I think of a guy like David Byrne. You know, I don't think David Byrne's going to say inflammatory things. <laughs> I just hear he shows up and he he rides a bicycle around whatever city he's in. <laughs> and, uh, he seems like almost like the Mister Rogers of of music. David Byrne seems like he was birthed exactly as he is. He's always been weird he's always been out there he's always been trying to do his own thing in spite of people wanting him to do like talking heads right he's, but he's, and he's just like but then that's he's been that way since like you listen to the first talking heads album and it's like strange yeah. and weird and it's different than what you actually think yeah like you like the first talking heads isn't like burning down the house it's like yeah it's like an early XTC I album and you're just something. like yeah you're just like what mm-hmm. um i always pictured david byrne as sort of mu- the music world's david lynch Yes. Yeah. yeah. Sort of in that same way where it's like whatever you think he's going to do, he's not going to do. And he's going to be purposefully weird, you know, just like David Lynch doing mm-hmm. weather reports every day for like five years. I could picture David Byrne, Byrne doing something like that. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I, I, I question, though, what do these people owe us? Do, do they owe us perfection? And then when the topic is celebrities who outlived or outlasted their welcome, um. When, when were they, it almost seems like celebrity is something that they do to us as opposed to them just doing their job as long as they can. Like it's something that, uh, um, when were they supposed to die? (laughs) Who was supposed to tell them when to stop? Right. Who was that? Who was supposed to, and, and knowing that they are surrounded by people whose welfare and well-being and careers are built upon them continuing. Mm. Like Jackie Chan should for his own health, stop making movies forever. <laughs> but I'm sure there's a bunch of people around him saying, come on, Jackie, you got another one, don't you? Go, Jackie, go, Jackie, Jackie, go, Jackie, go, yeah. Uh, I need to send my kid to school, Jackie. Do another movie. So, Richard, I think it's your last one. Yeah, it's my last one. And I believe we may have discussed him on a past episode, but it was too good not to talk about again. Uh, that'd be Von Meter. 
Oh wow! Okay, someone who's know. someone yeah. who's well whose welcome got overstayed. Yeah. Real quick. Yeah. So Von Meter was a comedian and impersonator back in the early 1960s, and he made his bones off of doing a spot on John F. Kennedy impression. Impress, mm. Impression. Had a uh, album called The First Family. It was all like an album of spoofs of the Kennedy family and, you know, what life was like with the Kennedys. And it was the fastest, fastest selling album in the pre-Beatles era. Hmm. Won the Grammy for Best Album of the Year in 1963. And so he's on top of the world. What happens in 1963 with the Kennedys? Oh, boy. The, you know, Kennedy is assassinated in November. And suddenly Von Meter is persona non grata hmm. through nothing that he has done, mind you. Yeah. It's just that hmm. suddenly the, the first family album gets pulled from shelves because retailers don't want to be seen as profiting from the assassination sure. of yeah. the president. Huh. All of his bookings get <laughs> get shut off. You know, they get get canceled. He tries to come up with a non Kennedy album and nobody cares about it. And within a few years, he went from literally, you know, the top of the comedy world to running a pub in Maine where he came from. That's interesting. It's just like five, like within the course of a couple of years, his career was over. Wow. I know. It was that fast. Yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty immediate. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a problem with people who have, who become really well known for one thing. Yeah. Or having one way of doing something when forever, whatever reason people get sick of you doing that one thing, whether it's in Von Meter's case because of a tragedy or because of just they're sick of you doing that one thing. If you don't have something to fall back on, mm-hmm. it's really easy for people for you to overstay your welcome. Yeah. One of the th- I had actually a, a fifth choice that I was contemplating was Jack Black. Oh. And I look at Jack Black and I think. He does the one thing pretty much over and over again. Mm. He plays Jack Black, basically, Mm -hmm. in so many of his movies, in the Tenacious D stuff. He's pretty much Jack from Tenacious D in a lot of his stuff. I didn't put him on there because I like the Jumanji movies. (laughs) We watched those. They're so fucking good. (laughs) They're really good. So I was kind of, that was the one, and and I like, and the Kung Fu Panda movies are good. So there was part of me that was just like, I can't quite put him in there. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, but what's interesting to me about the Jumanji movies is he's not playing Jack Black. He's playing a different yeah. character. So it's like one of the few times he's not Jack Black in qu- all mm-hmm. quotes. Um, but I think that if, you know, I think there was certainly a time when he was, people got sick of him just being maximum Jack Black all the time. Sure. It's a lot of Jack. Jack yeah. Black's a lot. And if you don't have that second pitch, if all you have is a fastball, People are going to catch up to it. Yeah. So you got to have something else you can do. And to your point with The Rock, I mean, he was a wrestler. Then he did comedy movies, action movies. He's done a couple of serious things, but nothing. Yeah. That much. But he's done, diff- he's kind of dabbled in different things, even though he's still The Rock and he's still kind of playing The Rock. He's able to kind of mix it up enough so that people don't go, oh God, it's another rock movie where he does all rock stuff. I don't know that I, I don't know that that's exactly the same as Jack Black just sort of being Jack Black over the top. I think part of it is because Jack Black's persona was so over the top. Yeah, I think that has something to do with it mm. too. So, anyway, back, it, that was that was a long way to get back to Von Meter, which is basically uh-huh. to say, if you're Von Meter and all you can do is the Kennedys, and suddenly this thing happens, people are going to get sick of you. Be done yeah. with you real quick. Yeah. I would. I find it interesting because I feel like it, in a kind of a, maybe a, a tale of two comics. The there was a comment. I looked it up because I thought it was Lenny Bruce, and it turns out it was in Lenny Bruce's first post Kennedy assassination appearance. He said, "Boy, is Von Meter screwed." Was like his opening line. Right. Got a huge laugh because everybody knew what Meter's career was built on at that time. Then uh, Bruce went on to kind of, you know, be obviously like a, somebody who was a target of uh, people um, supporting 
decency and entertainment and the First Amendment, um, um, ignoring the First Amendment, but also kind of became a parody of himself towards the end was going on stage and then just reading the the minutes from his court cases and things like that. So, right. Uh, but then um, a guy like, uh, I feel like Vaughn Meter might have been a guy like uh, Andrew Dice Clay, who had multiple characters that he did on stage, multiple personas. Sure. But blew up with this Dice Man character. Mm -hmm. And so when that hit its shelf life, people didn't believe that he had something else to offer. And maybe he didn't in, you know, have anything as compelling as that character. So I've seen comics kind of get caught in the trapped in the success in that they have, they might have other bullets in the chamber, but everybody just wants to see that one. They want to see that same thing, do that trick that we like, but up until the point where we don't like it, maybe we don't like it. And for me as a kid growing up, a uh, young Jeff loved Robin Williams. I couldn't get enough of Robin Williams. Sure, me too. But then when he started, then when I started seeing so much of him on talk shows, and he just seemed like cloying, like needing us to laugh at him so much in every part of his life, it just I just couldn't fucking stand Robin Williams. It, that, and that's the Jack Black thing. Uh -huh. I think Jack Black was the same way that he was just like a, this massive yeah. personality that just seemed to be like wanting, mm -hmm. needing sort of recognition yeah I, I think bill murray successfully did what he started to do in at with the razor's edge in the 80s he successfully did it in the 2000s he became a character actor he found his muse he, he, or he became a muse to, yeah, to, to wes anderson to wes yeah. anderson but he, here's a guy who wanted to break away from the clown role but the audience said no you're funny right do ghostbusters do these other things so I find it I find it interesting because we we want people to do something unique and interesting yet when they don't sometimes we say just give the people what they want. You know right. you know Jim Carrey we just want you to be this rubber limbed fartsmith, you know. Right. <laughs> fartsmith. Win Winfield. What an incredible, what an incredible <laughs> phrase. I mean that is going to be like the, that should be the number one line on like I his think Wikipedia page it. when he dies. <laughs> I think I stole it from Lisa Simpson, <laughs> <laughs> rubber-faced smart fartsmith or something. Uh, uh, Harrison Ford. Fuck that guy. Is my fortune. <laughs> he, he's also What's he ever done? What's he ever done for us? I I think Harrison Ford um has never wanted to be a celebrity. Mm. Oh, he's a yeah. person that has only ever wanted to act and uh -huh. to live his own personal life in Montana. But he is just one of these gruff, uh, horrible celebrities. Like, I think that he's one of those horrible celebrities. <laughs> he is a person there that doesn't want to be involved in anything that you've invited him to, maybe to a party or whatever. Yeah. But his um, kind of exterior... Um, kind of hard edge personality. It's so unwelcoming as a celebrity that I just want him to, I just want him to go away. And like what is he else what else is he gonna do? Like I loved when he walked back onto the Millennium Falcon, you know, <coughs> six years ago, whatever it was. Yeah. <coughs> Michael's getting choked up about it. <laughs> it was so beautiful to see him and Chewie and he's like Chewie, it's it's us. And he's just like, oh okay. And then he died in that and it was like good He's always wanted to die in Star Wars. Good. He's dead. Good. And then like, you know, six, three years later, four years later, he's like a ghost. And it's like, not even a ghost is a memory. And he's just, he doesn't even want to do that. It's just like, oh my God, why did they drag him out again? Um, it's like he's 79. Let the man do his carpentry <laughs> at his home in Montana but then he's or still, whatever. Like, he still wants to, he still wants to act. And you have to respect that to any point that he wants, that he wants to pursue his thing. But, mm -hmm. um, I think he's also on like my Mount Rushmore of I have no like evidence of this really, but man, I would bet a million dollars if I had it that he fucking hates the Muppets. <laughs> like if I yeah, could come I up with like, does. like I bet he fucking hates like, yeah, what is this? I don't guess felt <laughs> monsters. These felt puppets. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Ford, they're, they're Muppets. Animals. I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> like, are there any two people more cut from the opposite sides of a coin than him and Mark Hamill? Yeah. Who Mark Hamill is just game for everything. Yeah. He's 
incredibly online and seemingly sweet and mm-hmm. silly and embraces a fandom, yeah, whichever fandom it is in mm-hmm. that particular day that loves him. And then Harrison Ford is just like, I fucking hate Han Solo. <laughs> it's just like, well, that's kind of it's kind of odd. Uh-huh. This is the reason why maybe you have your success. I mean, I understand that you've done other movies before Star yeah. Wars in small parts. And yeah. like, I know you were Bob Falfa in the American, uh, uh-huh. you know, uh, uh, American, American Graffiti. Graffiti yeah. And I know that you went on to become also, uh, you know, uh, Indiana Jones. And there's a new Indiana Jones coming out. And God, what it, the hell is that going to be? Yeah. But at the same time, it's like there is a cele- like his celebrityness is loathsome. Yeah. Because he seems like he doesn't want to be there even though he's yeah. got untold millions of dollars <laughs> and all you got to do is just <laughs> smile or yeah. something. I don't know. Can't he just like yeah. smile? Can't he just look like he's like this mm-hmm. is the worst thing in the world to be, <laughs> you know, for all of us like yeah. droogs out there, like just being like watching him on TV being like. Uh, what is that? Counterpoint is a, quick. Mm. Yeah, please. The fact that he is the the person who most looks distressed and not wanting to be there in the Star Wars holiday special hmm. does give him some bonus points for being the only sane man in the room. Okay, <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll give. That's one that. time where his his sort of curmudgeonly behavior, <laughs> yeah, is is acceptable. I think he's got to stand next to this giant dog again. He's That's like, uh, really interesting because he's the th- he's in a couple things that we love. Uh, I love, I love him hearts. in the stuff that I love yeah. him in. Yeah, and we just want him to love it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't want to love it. Like, uh, if you heard John Wayne say, horses. I hate horses. <laughs> <laughs> what do you write him in every movie? <laughs> Stupid horses. What, I'm going to shoot this gun again? Yes. I got to punch a guy? Don't you like westerns? No. Like, like, do you think he's a person that, like, just hated everybody he's ever worked with like he wow. sat next to peter mayhew as chewbacca for you know i don't mm-hmm. know six years or whatever do you think he just despised this guy that was dressed up like a big hairy man <laughs> i don't know, I don't know. I, all he was was this gentle giant of a guy mm-hmm. with like his eyes painted dark and those beautiful blue sending eyes that chewbacca had you know <laughs> i love it i love it i don't know also like like dude you can't go away you got fucking lucky star wars should have been the worst movie ever and it was like a sci-fi thing with plastic helmets and stuff done in it was a cheap b movie that just turned out to be great and just be grateful (laughs) you jerk (laughs) oh that's funny it is like yeah um um not to get blue but he's like the most un okay never mind all right (laughs) Okay, dude. We'll this leave you hanging on that. Yeah, yeah. You tell us. You tell what us. He is the most un whatever. Un something. Of. Yeah. Uh, let's. Okay, I'm going to merge, just because I want to do this. I want to do this. Johnny Depp generous. Two of yours just got merged into one. Wow. Do I get like the average of the two points, Michael? How does this work? How does it work? Um. Uh, uh, let's see. That's uh, two and three. Three plus two is five. Two and a half. I'll give you two and go a half. One, go on more, see. And just because I know how much... Michael, I feel like you put a lot of your heart in this because I know how much you like... So Harrison Ford and Morrissey, just because I can I can feel you bleed on those. I can just feel that. Um, wait, so that's going to be it. Johnny? That's, that's yeah. three because you, you combine two. And combine one, two. So. Well, do we do four or, or is that two? Okay. If you want... I mean, you can choose if you want... Um, just choose. I I also want to say, <laughs> Vaughn Meter because that was a good pull. That's um, that's going from the archives there, and you educated probably some a lot of listeners there. This has been the Mount Rushmore. Know, how am I going to score this? <laughs> of <laughs> celebrities who outlasted their welcome. Bob Hope was the answer that you guys missed, and I as always am Jeff. I gotta tell you. Hey, you're great. Hi, Michael.